Let's begin first of all by talking about some comments that have been attributed to you in the Kenyan press and in some of the, the, the press in the region about your frustration with the slow progress in uh, moving East African economies to integrate perhaps faster than has been uh, possible up to date. I mean, we're still talking about East African, intra-East intra African trade of around 13%. But what can you do as politicians? Well, uh, we, you know, we as members of the East African Legislative Assembly are uh, you know, urging the partner states to move faster in implementing the, com the Common Market Protocol. As you are aware, we signed a Common Market Protocol last year in November, and it was supposed to be operational, not last year, the year before, sorry, and it was supposed to be operational in July last year. Uh, but to date, uh, we, the partner states haven't uh, harmonized all their laws so that uh, East Africans can enjoy the common market as envisaged in the common market protocol. So what we're urging the partner states to harmonize the laws as stated in the common market protocol so that uh, we can have first integration in terms of uh, movement of persons, goods, services, and right of establishment in the five partner states. Yeah, but given the example on which the East African community is based and that's in Europe and the kind of difficulties that they are facing. Perhaps one can sort of understand why the politicians are dragging their feet, if you like, and uh, taking things a bit slow. Wouldn't you say it's a wise move given what we're seeing in Europe? Well, in Europe, I think they're having a problem in terms of, uh, the, economy, in terms of the monetary union. I think it's more about the euro and all that. With us, what we're saying is, you know, we had a four-tier program. We had the customs union, the, uh, the com uh, common market, monetary union, and we say ultimately a federation. You know, our system is a bit different from uh, what the Europeans want to achieve in, uh, in Europe. You know, with us we're talking of ultimately having a political uh, federation. Yes, we've had a customs, uh, customs union, and you'll find that from 2005, since the customs union came into effect, we've had a jump in inter-regional trade of nearly 49%. And all this because of the customs, uh, customs union. We want to go to the second tier of integration in terms of the common market, which allows people to move freely within the, with, you know, within the partner states. We're not saying that uh, we're opening up completely. This is also, again, another stage of five years where we can achieve a, a common market protocol for, you know, a common market within the, within the EAC. In terms of the monetary union, I think the negotiations have just started. You know, there are no negotiations which has happened. They only sat last week to try and see the, the way forward in terms of uh, the negotiation process for the next, uh, for the next year, year, year or two. So with us, we haven't made the move or the jump to the monetary union, but we also have to allow East Africans to be able to move freely within the partner states so that they can enjoy the freedoms that uh, we told them they should enjoy under the common market. Yeah, from your interaction with uh, the politicians in, in the countries of the East African community and with ordinary citizens, mm -hmm. where do you think the problem lies? Is it the presidents and their governments who are holding back the process, or is it because citizens are not ready for the big steps that you are proposing? I mean, common market and monetary union are not small steps. These are big, big, big efforts that are uh, uh, big steps in terms of bringing people, to people together. Well, you're very right. It, they are big steps. And uh, I, I think when you look at the common market, it's, it's a big step in the right direction. You know, we had a customs union where we have free movement of goods within the partner states. Now we're talking of free movements of goods, services, you know, capital, uh, right of establishment. And when you ask East Africans, these are things they used to enjoy before. And they even enjoy now because you'll find that uh, within the informal uh, trade, People are moving within our borders freely, and it is us, the politicians, who are slower than the, you know than the than the citizens. If you talk to the business people, business people want to trade and work with with, with each other. You know, we're not talking anything out of the ordinary. We're just saying that uh, these freedoms, people should be allowed to work in the other partner states, invest in the other partner states, you know, and move freely in terms of uh, feel like East Africans. If we say we're East Africans and we can't move freely within our partner states. What's the use of having a, an East African community? You can just have bilaterals and people use visas like they use in other partner states or other countries, and we continue. But we're saying that if we came together and said that uh, we should have a, a regional body that uh, brings the East Africans together, and they, you know, if you look at the main objective is to widen and deepen the integration process in fields of you know, in trade, you know, po politics, culture, you know, and, and those things. 
So we are urging the partner states, sh they should not you know, just say that, oh, we had a customs uh, common market, we signed it, but they should walk the talk and not so and uh, allow East Africans to enjoy those freedoms. Yeah. Mr. Abdi, I've got with me here uh, uh, a colleague who is uh, our guest host for tonight. It's Kobi Lichrange. He's an investment analyst. And he says perhaps what you should be focusing on more than anything else, and he's going to bring in his points to you as well, is perhaps stabilizing the business environment and making it a little bit more predictable than it currently is. What would you say to that? Well, in terms of what's it called as an assembly, you know, we, be, we are trying to work with the business community. You know, our community is people-centered and private sector driven. So it's the private sector that really leads the way. When you look at the, the customs union, the big thing is it's all about business. It's about in terms of trade, in terms of uh, how we can move our goods freely. We have a common external tariff. And not only that, as an assembly, we also try to what's it called, uh, eliminate or urge the partner state to eliminate the non-tariff barriers in terms of you know, you always find that uh, there are hindrances to trade. Now we have uh, situations where we have one, uh, one stop border posts. We're also trying to have uh, standardization. We have a law which we passed which in terms of uh, standardization of products. So products, uh, you know, come to one partner state are free to move within the partner states we, in terms of competition. So we're trying to make East Africa a destination which is, uh, you know, good for investment and for business people to what's it called to try uh, to know that once they come to East Africa, they can uh, invest freely and in a stable environment. I think when you look at the, in terms of stable environment, one of the most stable regions, I think I would say, in, uh, in Africa currently in terms of uh, the business environment. Yeah, I mean, let me, uh, let, me, let me back up what you've said there. I mean, I agree with you. It's, it's, it's one of the most stable, the sta most stable regions. Probably another question just comes coming to mind while I'm, I'm listening to, uh, to, to the debate is if, when you talk to international investors, one of the things that kind of lacks investing in Africa is the fact that there's no certainty or there's very little certainty. Certainly there's profitability and certainly there's, uh, there's, a, there's enough uh, opportunity that, that kind of knocks in Africa. What is the assembly doing in order to create more certainty uh, for investors across, uh, across the region? Well, first and foremost, we want to move East Africa as one investment destination. In essence, once you invest in East Africa, you're investing in uh, a market of 107 million people. Two is to also show investors that uh, you know, your investments are safe in terms of when you invest in, uh, in, in East Africa. And we're trying to put in, uh, in place uh, you know, policies, for example, in terms of um, reducing the, the cost of uh, doing investment or the cost of, uh, in, in terms of having infrastructure, whether you say roads, railways, the cost of business is, uh, is lower than, uh, to lower the cost of business, I guess, in relation to other destinations in, in, in Africa. And uh, also the sense of when you invest here, your investments are also safe. You know, it's the rule of law that determines things. Not that you can come here and you're uncertain of whether your investments are safe or not. So, and I would like to also say that the laws passed by the East African Legislative Assembly supersede national laws in terms of areas pertaining to the community, once assented to by the heads of state of the partner states. So we're trying to make a safe environment, uh, uh, what's it called, uh, an environment which is uh, easy to invest in, an environment which has high returns at the same time. And it's profitable for both uh, the investor and the people here as well. 